So, since alam nyo na kung paano mag-classify ng differential equation according to type, degree, and order, at alam nyo na din kung paano kumuha ng general solution at particular solution for the different types of differential equation, we are now ready to have the applications of differential equation in real life scenario. So here are some of the physical applications of differential equation. So unang una is we have the law of growth and decay, the Newton's law of pooling, simple chemical conversion, flow problems, and rectilinear motion. So we have the law of growth and decay, the rate of change, okay, the rate of change of y is proportional to y, wherein yung k natin is the constant of proportionality, y is the size of population, or it can be the number of dollars or amount of radioactive. Ngayon, how do we solve differential equations of this form? If you can recognize uh, this equation, you can solve this by separation of variables. So, dito kasi, di ba, pwede natin paghiwalay si dy over dt is equal to k times y. So, pagsamahin natin yung mga variable, variable y together, and then ihiwalay natin si variable t, and k. Uh, k is constant, so si variable t kailangan natin siyang ihiwalay. So, i-write lang natin siya, dy over dt is equal to k times y. Ngayon, paano natin tatanggalin si dt dito sa kabila? So, para matanggal natin si dt, mag-multiply mag lang tayo sa magkabilang side ng equation natin ng dt so that this will cancel out. And then, kailangan natin tanggalin si variable y dito sa kabila. So, we need to divide each side of our equation by y so that this will cancel out dy over y therefore is equal to k times dt ay nakita niyo na magkahiwalay na yung mga variables natin magkasama na yung mga variable y together so ready na tayong mag-integrate integrating each side of our equation okay integral of dy over y di ba alam natin ang integral ni dy over y is ln of y and then, ang integral ni k times dt, that is k times t. And of course, huwag niyong kalimutan mag-add ng c. Okay? And then, the next step is, kailangan natin silang i-express sa natural log form. So, we need to raise e raised to ln of y is equal to e raised to k times t plus c. So, dito, pwede na natin ibaba si y dito. Pero dito sa kabila, paghiwalayin natin e raised to kt times e raised to c. Ngayon, if we let e raised to c be equal to a, so, i re write lang natin y is equal to e raised to kt times a, or we can write a is a times e raised to uh, kt. Okay? So, ito na ang magiging general solution natin for law of growth and decay. So, saan nyo ba pwedeng i-apply ang law of growth and decay? So, you can apply this sa mga word problems natin involving population growth, compound interest, radioactive decay, and drug elimination. So, let us have a word problem on population growth first. A certain city had a population of 25,000 in 1960 and a population of 30,000 in 1970. Assume that its population will continue to grow exponentially at a constant rate. What population can its city planners expect in the year 2000? Okay, so i-recall lang natin na ang equation natin for uh, law of growth and decay is, ang general solution natin is y is equal to a times e raised to kt, wherein yung y natin can denote the population growth, pwede the number of dollars, and so on. Okay, so if y denotes the population growth, before we proceed with the computation, i-identify natin yung mga given dito sa word problem. Pero para hindi kayo malito that y denotes population, let y be equal to our p. Palitan natin si variable y ng p so that population is equal to a times e raised to kt. Okay, they are just the same uh, equation. Pinalitan lang natin si variable y ng variable p to denote that it is for population. 
Okay? So, ang given natin dito sa word problem is, ang population daw natin, initial population is 25,000. So, let us consider 1960 as our initial time. So, when T is equal to 0, ang population natin, Lagyan natin P sub 0 to denote that this is the population when T is equal to 0. Okay, ang population natin is 25,000. Ngayon, nung 1970 daw, ang population na is 30,000. So, from 1960 to 1970, diba that is 10 years? So, when T is equal to 10, P sub 10, ang population natin after 10 years is 30,000. Ngayon, What populations can its city planners expect in the year 2000? So from 1960 to 2000, 2000 minus 1960, okay, that is 40 years. So T is equal to 40. Ano din ang population natin after 40 years? Okay? So paano natin isasolve yung problem natin using itong equation na to? The process is the same kapag ka kumukuha tayo ng particular solution sa mga differential equation natin out of the general solution. So, we just need to substitute the value of our population and time until we reach out t is equal to 40 to get a particular solution for this word problem at makuha natin yung value for population. So, unahin natin when t is equal to 0, okay, lagyan natin when t is equal to 0, ang population natin is 25,000. So, substituting dito sa equation natin, i-rewrite natin yung equation dito sa baba, P is equal to A, E raised to K times time. Okay? Ngayon, substituting population, ang population natin when P is equal to 0 is 25,000, is equal to E times E raised to K times, ang time natin is 0. K times 0, diba that is 0, E raised to 0, that is just equal to 1. And A times, 1, A pa rin naman ang sagot. A therefore is equal to 25,000. Silagay natin. A is equal to 25,000. Ngayon itong nakuha natin na value ng A, i-substitute lang natin siya dito. So that, P now is equal to 25,000 times E raised to K times time. Ang next step natin is i-substitute naman natin when t is equal to 10, ano ang population natin. So using itong panibagong equation natin, t is equal to 10, p sub 10 is equal to 30,000. Okay, so i-substitute natin siya sa equation natin kanina. p is equal to 25,000 e raised to k times time. So substituting the value of our population and time here, ang population natin is 30,000. Tapos, okay, 30,000 is equal to 25,000. I-raise to K times 10, or that is we can just write 10K. Okay, next is we need to divide each side of our equation by 25,000. Okay, so that dito, dito sa kabila, 25,000 will cancel out. And our, our equation will reduce. Magiging uh, 30,000 divided by 25,000 is equal to e raised to 10k. Ngayon, ang next step natin is kailangan nating ibaba yung k natin. So, how do we do that? So, kailangan nyo lang malaman yung inverse yung inverse property of ln of x tsaka e raised to ln of x. Okay, the inverse property of, ilagyan natin dito sa taas. The inverse property of ln of e raised to x and e raised to ln of x. Kasi parehas sila, we'll have the same answer as x. Okay, kapag ang form na niya is ln e raised to x or e raised to ln of x, Pwede nyo kasing ibaba yung exponent natin. So, applying the same logic, we must express itong magkabilang, magkabilang side ng equation natin into the, into the natural log form. So, ln of the absolute value of 30,000 all over 25,000 is equal to ln of the absolute value of e raised to 10k. So that, we will have ln of uh, the absolute value of 30,000 all over 25,000 is equal to, di ba ito, ln of e raised to 10k, 
pwede na natin ibaba si 10K dyan kasi yan yung exponent. Okay, applying the inverse property of the natural log. Ngayon, ang next step natin is we need to divide each side of our equation by 10. Okay, so that this will cancel out. K therefore is equal to 1 over 10 times ln of the absolute value of 30,000 all over 25,000. So we need to compute that one. 1 over 10 times ln of 30,000 all over 25,000. So we can get rid of the absolute value na kasi positive naman pareha si 30,000 tsaka 25,000 dyan. So that is 0 0.0... 0.018232. Okay? So, kagaya ng ginawa natin sa una kanina, eh, substitute lang natin yung value ng k natin dito sa equation na to so that we will have p is equal to 25,000 e raised to ang k natin 0 0.018232 times time. And finally, eto na, when t is equal to 40, Ano ang population natin after 40 years? Okay? So, substitute na lang natin yung value ng time natin dito sa equation. So, we have P is equal to 25,000 e raised to 0 0.018232 times 40. So, that is 25,000 times e raised to 0.018232 times 40. That is 51,839.67. But since we are dealing with population, kailangan whole number yung sagot natin. So that is 51,840. Okay, so ibig sabihin ng population natin after 40 years is 51,840. So, let us take a look at the population growth graphically. So, let our y-axis be denoted by our time and our x-axis be our population. Yung mga nakuha natin na sagot kanina, i-plug in lang natin siya dito sa graph. So, when t is equal to 0, ang population natin is 25,000. So, that is somewhere here. And then, when t is equal to 10, ang population is 30,000. So, nandito. When t is equal to 40, ang population is 51,840. So, that is somewhere here. So, makikita nyo, ang population natin, as we increase time, nag increase din yung population natin. Okay, so ganito ang itsura ng graph natin. So, let us have an example naman sa compound interest. Money is deposited in a savings account for which the interest is compounded continuously. If the balance in the account doubles in 6 years, what is the annual percentage rate? Ngayon ang equation natin for compound interest is A is equal to P times E raised to R times time. So pinalitan lang natin yung mga variable but basically ito pa rin yung equation natin for law of growth and decay. So, wherein yung A natin is the amount of money, P is the principal amount, and then E is uh, E raised to R, wherein yung R natin is the rate of a uh, percentage rate of interest. Okay? Ngayon, may given tayo dito. So, ang time natin is 6 years. Ngayon, ano ang magiging amount natin? So, sabi niya after 6 years, magdodouble daw yung pera. So, that is twice the principal amount. Principal amount is yung initial na pera na in-invest mo. Okay? Ngayon, substituting na dito sa ating general solution or general equation, ang A natin is 2P is equal to P times E raised to R times 6. Okay? Ngayon, dividing each side of our equation by P, so yung P natin will cancel out. So dito sa kabila, di ba si P magka-cancel out na pati dito sa kabila. So ang may iwan na lang is, 2 is equal to e raised to 6r. Ang next step natin is we need to express this in the natural log form. So we have ln of the absolute value of 2 is equal to ln of the absolute value of e raised to 6r. So that ln of the absolute value of 2 by the inverse property of ln of e raised to x. Di ba pwede natin ibaba si 6r? Okay? Ang next step natin is we need to divide each side of our equation by 6 so that uh, our 
equation will be, we'll cancel out this one. So, ang may iwan na lang is rate. Now, therefore, is equal to 1 over 6. Ln of the absolute value of 2. So, computing this sa inyong calculator, 1 over 6 ln of 2. Pwede nyo nang tanggalin yung absolute value kasi positive naman si 2. So, that is 0 0.1155. Or you can express this in percentage. That is, uh, multiply nyo lang siya into 100 para maging percentage ta siya. This is equivalent to 11.1155. 55%. So, ito yung ating annual percentage rate for the money that was deposited. Ngayon, looking at this graphically, di ba when t is equal to 0, of course, ang pera pa rin natin, ang amount natin is equal to p. Yung principal amount pa lang ang pera natin. Okay? So, nandito lang siya. So, looking at this graphically, wherein yung y-axis natin is the amount, ang x-axis natin is the years. Okay? And then, sabi niya after 6 years, Di ba nag-double daw yung pera? So, that is twice the principal amount. So, nandito. Okay? Ngayon, makikita nyo, as we increase the years, of course, mag increase din yung money that was deposited on the savings account. So, let us have an example sa radioactive decay. Let Y represent the mass of a particular radioactive element whose half-life is 25 years. How much of 1 gram would remain after 15 years? So, sa radioactive decay, we can use yung original equation na natin for law of growth and decay. That is, y is equal to a times e raised to kt. Okay? Ngayon, we need to identify yung mga given natin. So, dito, ang y, when y is equal to 1 gram, of course, ang time natin is equal to 0. So, hindi pa siya nag start na mag-decay. That is our initial time, so 1 gram pa lang siya. And then, sabi niya, ang half-life daw niya is 25 years. So, when y is equal to 1 half, ang time natin now is 25 years. Ngayon, what is y when, it, when time is equal to 15? Okay? Uh, kagaya ng mga ginawa natin sa mga previous example, isa-substitute lang natin ito sa equation natin. So, dito, when y is equal to 1 gram, and t is equal to 0, that is 1 is equal to a times e raised to k times 0. Okay? And then e raised to k times 0, di ba magiging 1 na yan? A therefore is equal to 1. So our equation will become y is equal to e raised to k times time. Okay? Pangalawa is when y is equal to 1 half, ang time natin is equal to 25. So, substituting na dito sa ating equation, y is equal to 1 half, tapos, e raised to k times, ang time natin is 25. Okay? Ngayon, we must express this into the natural log form, that is, ln of the absolute value of 1 half is equal to ln of the absolute value of e raised to 25k. Okay? So, that our equation will become, ilagay natin siya dito sa taas, pagiging, ln of the absolute value of 1 half is equal to 25k. Okay, ang next step natin is we need to divide each side of our equation by 25. So, dividing each side of our equation by 25, we now have, this will cancel out na, k therefore is equal to 1 over 25, ln of the absolute value of 1 half. So, solving for k, 1 half times ln of, uh, 1 over 25 times ln of 1 half, we have negative 0 0.02773. Okay, so substituting the value of our k sa ating equation, okay, isubstitute natin siya dito, y is equal to e raised to, ang k natin is negative 0 0.02773 times time. Okay? Ngayon, finally, ito na ang magiging equation natin. So, when t is equal to 15, ano ang value ng y natin? So, substituting the value of time here, y is equal to e raised to negative 0 0.02773 times 15. So, that is e 
I raised to negative 0 0.02773 times 15. That is, y is equal to 0 0.6597. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, after 15 years, ang magiging, ang matitira na lang sa 1 gram natin is 0 0.6597 grams. So, ito na yung sagot natin. Okay? Ngayon, looking at this graphically, so when our time is equal to 0, di ba, may 1 gram pa tayo, so nandito siya. Okay? And then, when t is equal to 25 na, 1 half na lang ang natira, so nandito. Okay? And then, when t is equal to 15, so that is uh, somewhere here. So 0.6, ganun. So makikita nyo ang magiging itsura ng graph natin is pababa. Okay, so as we increase the time, of course, nagde-decrease yung graph natin. Makikita nyo, pababa siya. Okay, wherein yung y natin is the mass of a particular radioactive. And then, of course, yung x-axis natin is our time. So, for Newton's law of cooling, the rate of change of temperature is proportional to the difference between its own temperature and the temperature of its surrounding. So, ulitin lang natin. The rate of change of temperature is proportional to the difference of its own temperature and the temperature of its surrounding. Ngayon, yung K natin dito is the constant of proportionality. T sub S is the constant temperature of surrounding medium. Ngayon, how do we solve differential equations of this form? So, kagaya doon sa Newton, uh, doon sa ating law of growth and decay, parehas lang yung process ng pag-solve natin. So, we can solve this by separation of variable. So, you have to keep on your mind that your capital T is temperature. Ilagay natin. Yung capital T natin is temperature. Tapos, ang small t natin is our time. Ngayon, kailangan natin paghiwalayin yung mga variable natin. So, pagsamahin natin yung mga capital T na variable together and ihiwalay natin si small t kasi magkaibang variable yung mga yan. Ngayon, by separation of variable, ang gagawin natin is mag-multiply tayo sa magkabilang side ng equation natin ng dt tapos i-divide natin each side of our equation by t minus t sub s. Okay, so that our equation will reduce into dt over T minus T sub S is equal to negative K times DT. So, kapag ganito na magkasama na yung capital T together, and then ihiwalay na natin yung small t, we can integrate each side of our equation na. And then integrating each side of our equation will give us ln of the absolute value of T minus T sub S is equal to negative K times T plus C. Okay, and then we need to express, express itong answer natin in the natural log form. So, that is E raised to L and of the absolute value of T minus T sub S is equal to E raised to negative KT plus C. Okay, so dito, si E raised to L and of the absolute value of T minus T sub S, pwede na natin ibaba yung exponent niyan, T minus T sub S, is equal to E raised to negative KT. Tapos, maghiwalayin lang natin ito, times E raised to C. Ngayon, if we let E raised to C be denoted by A, T minus T sub S now is equal to E raised to negative kt times a, or pwede natin ilagay sa unahan si a natin. And then, i-transpose lang natin si t sub s sa kabila so that our general solution for temperature is t is equal to t sub s plus a e raised to negative kt. So, ito na yung general solution natin kapag ka Newton's law of cooling ang pinag-uusapan natin. So, ang applications ng Newton's law of cooling natin is pwede siya for investigations particularly sa forensics, kasi it can be used to determine the time of death. Pwede din siya for computer manufacturing, particularly sa processors and uh, cooling systems. Uh, pwede din siya for solar water heater. And it can also be applied for calculating the surface area of an object. Okay, so let us have this example. According to Newton's law of cooling, the rate of change of temperature satisfies this equation where T sub S is the ambient, ambient temperature or yung room temperature natin. 
K is a constant and T is time in minutes. When object is placed in room temperature with 10 degrees Celsius, it was found that the temperature of the object drops from 90 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius in 30 minutes. Then, determine the temperature of an object after 20 minutes. Okay, so before we proceed with the calculation, of course, we need to break down yung mga information that is provided in this word problem. So, sabi niya, ang magiging room temperature daw natin dito is 10 degrees Celsius. And then, when T is equal to 0 for our initial time, ang magiging initial temperature natin is, sabi niya, when an object is placed in room temperature with uh, 10 degrees Celsius, it was found that the temperature of the object drops from 90 degrees Celsius. So, sa initial time natin, when T is equal to 0, ang initial temperature natin is 90 degrees Celsius. Ngayon, after 30 minutes, di ba, nag-drop daw from 90 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. So, when T is equal to 30, we now have T sub 30. Ang temperature natin after 30 minutes is 30 degrees Celsius. So, ang pinapahanap natin sa atin is when T is equal to 20, ano ang temperature natin after 20 minutes? Okay? So, for Newton's law of cooling, di ba ito yung model natin or differential equation natin? And na-derive na natin kanina yung solution for Newton's law of cooling. We have T is equal to T sub S plus A times E raised to negative KT. Okay? Ang gagawin lang natin is isa-substitute lang natin yung value ng uh, T at saka T sub, uh, tem time at saka temperature natin dito sa ating equation para masolve natin or makuha natin yung temperature ng object after 20 minutes. So, unahin natin yung initial condition. When T is equal to 0, our temperature when T is equal to 0 is 90 degrees Celsius. Silagay natin. When T is equal to 0, ang temperature natin is 90 degrees Celsius. Okay, substitute lang natin siya dito. Ang temperature natin is 90 degrees Celsius. Tapos ang T sub S natin or room temperature is 10 degrees Celsius plus A e raised to negative K times. Ang time natin is 0. Okay, and then we know that any number or variable raised to 0, ba? Magiging 1 lang naman ang sagot dyan. A times 1 is just A. Okay, and then it transpose natin si 10 sa kabila, magiging negative na siya. 90 minus 10, that is 80. Okay? 80. Ang value ng A natin is 80. Ngayon, ito nakuha natin na value ng A, isubstitute lang natin siya dito. Okay? So, substituting yung value ng A natin, T is equal to T sub S plus A e raised to Ah, uh, ang value ng a na natin dito kanina is 80. So palitan na natin siya ng 80. 80 e raised to negative kt. Okay, ang next natin is ito. When t is equal to 30, lagay natin. When t is equal to 30, ang magiging temperature natin t sub 30 is 30 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, using itong panibagong equation na natin, ang temperature natin is 30 degrees Celsius, tapos ang room temperature pa rin natin is 10 degrees Celsius, plus 80, e raised to negative K times, ang time natin is 30. Okay? Ayusin lang natin yon. Ang next step natin is transpose natin ito sa kabila, 30 minus 10, that is 20. Is equal to 80 e raised to, pag, uh, i arrange lang natin, unahin natin si constant, negative 30 times k. And then dividing each side of our equation by 80, okay, so that this will cancel out, 20 over 80 is equal to e raised to negative 30k. Okay, ang next step natin is kunin natin yung ln ng magkabilang side ng equation natin. So ln of the absolute value of 20 over 80 times is equal to the ln of the absolute value of e raised to negative 30k so that ln of the absolute value of 20 over 80 is equal to negative 30k. Ang next step natin is we need to divide each side of our equation by negative 30. Okay, so that k is equal to 
So, i-compute nyo na. Negative 1 over 30 times ln of the absolute value of 20 over 80. We have 0 0.04621. Okay? Ito, nakuha natin na value ng k natin is i-substitute lang natin siya dito. So, magiging panibagong equation natin is t is equal to t sub s plus 80. E raised to, ang k natin is, uh, i-atras na natin konti kasi hindi ka siya, hindi susulat natin na value. So that is, t is equal to t sub s plus 80, e raised to negative 0 0.04621 times time. Okay? So substituting the value of our time here, ang t sub s natin is 10. Diba when t is equal to 20 na, Para mahanap na natin yung temperature after 20 minutes, dito na tayo sa last. 10 plus 80 e-raised to negative 0 0.4621 times ang time natin is 20. So that is 10 plus 80 times e-raised to negative 0. Point, that is 0 0.04621. 0 0.04621. Times 20, we have 41.7479 or we can just uh, reduce it into 41.75 degrees Celsius. So, ibig sabihin ang temperature natin after 20 minutes is 41.75 degrees Celsius. So, let us have a chemical reaction model here. During a certain chemical reaction, substance A is converted into substance B at a rate proportional to the square of the amount of A. When T is equal to 0, 60 grams of A are present and after 1 hour, only 10 grams of A remain unconverted. So how much of A is present after 2 hours? So before we proceed sa calculation, of course, we need to formulate our chemical reaction model here. So dito, sabi niya, rate is proportional to the square of the amount of A. So ibig sabihin yung rate of change natin, uh, the change in Y with respect to time is equal to K, which is the constant of proportionality, equal to the square of amount of A. Okay, So that is the square of Y, kasi Y denotes the amount of A. Ngayon, uh, i-identify natin yung mga given that is provided in this word problem. So, when T is equal to 0, meron pa tayong Y is equal to 60 grams. Okay? And then, after 1 hour, so when T is equal to 1, so let our time be in, in hours. Tapos, ang magiging Y na natin after 1 hour is 10 grams na lang siya. Okay? So, sabi niya, how much of A is present after 2 hours? So, when T is equal to 2, ano din ang value ng Y na natin? Okay? So, unang-una, dito sa ating model muna, we need to solve for the general solution. So, applying separation of variables, mapaghiwalayan natin si variable Y, ilipat natin siya sa kabila, tapos si variable T sa kabila. So, we, sa so magkabilang side ng equation natin, magmultiply tayo ng uh, DT, Okay, and then i-divide natin each side of our equation by y squared. So that, dito sa kabila, dt will cancel out, tapos dito si y squared naman ay mag-cancel out. So ang magiging equation na natin is, dy over y squared is equal to uh, k times dt. Okay, so makikita nyo na, magkasama na yung mga variable y together natin, and then ihiwalay natin si variable t. Ang gagawin na natin is, we need to integrate each side of our equation. So we have, the integral of dy over y squared is equal to the integral of k times dt. Ngayon dito sa kabila, we can apply simple power rule here. Diba by simple power rule, we know that the integral of x raised to n dx is equal to x raised to n plus 1 all over n plus 1. So dito ay akyat natin si y raised to 2 magiging integral of y raised to negative 2 dy is equal to. Dito sa kabila naman is ilabas natin si k since constant siya dito, times the integral of dt. So, applying simple power rule here, y raised to negative 2 dy, the integral of y raised to negative 2 dy, 
y raised to negative 2 plus 1, that is y raised to negative 1, all over negative 1 is equal to k. Tapos ang integral ni dt is t plus c. Okay? So, simplifying itong equation natin, magiging negative y raised to negative 1 is equal to k t plus c. Ngayon, we need to get rid of the negative here dito sa kabila. So, we need to multiply negative 1 sa magkabilang side ng equation natin para matanggal natin yung negative sa may y natin. Okay? So, that maging positive na, na siya. y raised to negative 1 is equal to uh, negative times the quantity kt plus c. Ngayon, we need to get, get rid of the exponent negative 1. So, paano ba natin gagawing positive yung exponent ni y. So, mag-multiply lang tayo sa exponent sa magkabilang side ng equation natin ng negative 1. Okay? So, multiplying negative 1 sa exponent natin, negative times negative, di ba? Magiging positive na siya. y is equal to negative times kt plus c, the quantity is raised to negative 1. Or we can rewrite this, y is equal to negative 1 all over kt plus c. Kasi, di ba, any, any number raised to negative 1, ang magiging value niya is the reciprocal of that value. Okay, so ito na yung magiging general solution natin. Ngayon, since na-derive na natin yung general solution, ready na tayong mag-substitute. Okay? So, ang initial condition natin is when t is equal to 0, di ba y is equal to 60. So, itong initial condition natin, i-substitute natin sa nakuha nating general solution for the chemical reaction model. So, that is, Ang value ng y natin is 60 is equal to negative 1 all over k times 0 plus c. Ngayon, k times 0, di ba? 0 pa rin naman yan. So, we, we have 60 is equal to negative 1 over c. Ngayon, ang next step natin is mag-multiply tayo sa magkabilang side ng equation natin ng c. So, that when we distribute c, magiging 60c is equal to, dito sa kabila na magka-cancel out na si 1 over c, tsaka c natin ang may 1 is negative 1 na lang. Ang next step is we need to divide each side of our equation by 60 so that this will cancel out. C therefore is equal to negative 1 over 60. Okay? Ngayon itong nakuha natin na value ni C, isubstitute natin siya dito. Y is equal to negative 1 all over kt plus negative 1 over 60. Ngayon to get rid of the fraction dito sa ating denominator, Mag-multiply tayo sa numerator at denominator natin ng 60. Okay, so that we will have negative 1 times 60, di ba? Negative 60 all over 60 times kt, that is 60 kt. Tapos magiging negative na to kasi negative 1 over 60 times 60 is negative 1. Okay, so ito yung panibagong equation natin for y. Ang next step natin is, yung pangalawang condition natin, di ba? When t is equal to 1. 10 grams na lang ang natira doon sa ating substance. Okay? So, substituting the value of our T and Y here. So, magiging equation na natin is, i-rewrite lang natin siya dito. Y is equal to negative 60 all over 60 times K. Tapos, ang time natin is 1 minus 1. Okay? Y is equal to negative 60 all over 60K minus 1. So, to get rid of the 60 sa numerator natin, mag-divide tayo sa magkabilang side ng equation natin ng 60. Matanggal na din natin si negative. So, mag-divide tayo ng negative 1 over 60 sa magkabilang side. Okay? So, that dito sa kabila, this will cancel out na. So, ang magiging itsura ng equation na natin is negative y over 60 is equal to 1 over 60k minus 1. Okay, ngayon, di ba yung value ng y natin, nakalimutan nating palitan kanina. Palitan natin yung value ng y na natin. So, ang value ng y natin, di ba, that is 10. Okay, so ibig sabihin, magre-reduce na yung equation natin, that is negative 1 over 6, is equal to 1 over 60k minus 1. Ngayon, i-express natin siya sa, i-akyat natin yung mga denominator natin, so that is negative 1, a uh, negative 6 raised to negative 1 is equal to 60k minus 1, the quantity raised to negative 1. Ngayon, ang next step natin is para ma-extract kasi natin si variable k, 
Mag-multiply tayo ng negative 1 sa ating exponent sa magkabilang side ng equation natin. So, multiplying negative 1 sa magkabilang side ng equation, di ba this will cancel out na magiging positive na siya. So, negative 6 is equal to 60k minus 1. Okay, ang next step natin is i-transpose natin si negative 1 sa kabila, magiging positive na siya. So, negative 6 plus 1, that is 5. Uh, negative 5 is equal to 60k. Okay, ngayon ang next step natin is to get rid of the 60, we need to divide each side of our equation by 60. Okay? Ngayon, ang value ng k natin is equal to negative 5 over 60 or that is equivalent to negative 5 over 60. Equivalent siya sa negative 1 over 12. So, substituting yung value ng k natin dito sa equation na natin kanina, y is equal to negative 60 all over uh, 60 times k natin is negative 1 over 12 times time minus 1. So simplifying this, that is negative 60 all over 60 times negative 1 over 12. That is negative 5t minus 1. Ngayon, dito sa ating equation, di ba kung ifa-factor natin ang negative dito sa denominator, y is equal to negative 60 all over negative times 5t plus 1. Finactor out lang natin yung negative. And we know that negative divided by negative is positive. So y therefore is equal to 60 over 5t plus 1. Okay, ngayon we are now ready for the last condition. So when t is equal to 2, ano ang value ng y natin. So using itong equation na to na, substituting the value of our t, y is equal to 60 over 5 times 2 plus 1. That is 60 divided by 5 times 2 plus 1. That is 5 point 5.45 Grams. So, since grams ang pinag-uusapan natin. So, ibig sabihin, when t is equal to 2, 5.45 grams na lang ang natira doon sa ating substance A. So, ipakita natin yung answer natin using graph. So, when t is equal to 0, ang y natin is 60. So, nandito siya sa taas. And then, when t is equal to 1, ang y natin is 10. So, nandito. Pag-locate lang tayo ng point sa Cartesian coordinate plane. And when t is equal to 2, ang y natin is 5.45. So, somewhere here. Okay, so makikita nyo, as time increases, nagde-decrease naman yung y natin. Okay, so ganito yung itsura ng graph natin. So, that ends our discussion for today. See you again on the next video for the next topic.